We bought a boat on the internet, sight unseen. This is what we got. Most of us grew up fishing out of old aluminum boats like this one. They might not be fast or pretty or really all that comfortable, but they're functional, adaptable, and readily available. When we decided to make a fishing show, it seemed right to do it with a boat like this. So we went on Craigslist and found this guy. Hi, I'm Tony Paul. This is my boat. I'm selling so neutral. And we just brought the ship to it. Gotta get it back in neutral. And this one is the lights. Yeah. They used to work. Y'all are gonna have fun getting this one though. We had no idea what we were getting into. It's an old boat that's, you know, 30-year-old boat, 50-year-old trailer, 50-year-old motor. But if just tinker with them a little bit and away you go. We're taking this boat from Texas to Florida to Georgia, putting it in situations it was definitely not designed to handle. What was that? With 10 of the most interesting anglers we know. Yeah, it's better. Yeah! Oh, dude, that is really, really, really fun, man. Something They'll each get one day to make whatever modifications they want. One boat, five fisheries, 10 anglers, 2,500 miles, unlimited bad ideas. Got it. This is Das Boat. I'm Steven Ranella, hunter, angler, writer, and host of the Meat Eater television show. Welcome to the first episode of our new series, Das Boat. For our maiden voyage, Das Boat is headed to Rockport, Texas to fish with JT Van Zandt. JT is a musician, a fishing guide, and a taproot Texan. I've got a lot of pride as a, as a generational Texan, like sixth generation. There's something about Texas that's hard to explain. The food, the cold beer, the sweat, the thorny plants, the stinging insects, the, the snakes, the alligators. It's a tough, rugged place. Oh, ouch. And when that gets in your veins, it's just real hard to shake it. JT lives in Aransas County, which got hammered by Hurricane Harvey in 2017. Between the 130 mile per hour winds and the 10 foot storm surge, these small coastal towns took a beating. Two years in, the recovery is ongoing, but there's nothing soft about this part of Texas or the people who live here. But before we take our questionable new toy into open ocean, I figure I should probably get an expert opinion on its seaworthiness. Let's talk about the trailer for a minute. I mean, it's fine. Maybe new rubber on there. Maybe fix that tire. Fix the flat tire, <laughs> yeah. Well, there's competing wisdoms. There's um, a stitch in time saves nine. And then there's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You got it. So. What are we gonna do? We're gonna pull it, pull the motor off, put a Honda 40 on it, correct? Yeah. When people want to reinforce the transom, which we have to do, right? Yes. Now, why is that? Well, because you've already got cracks right here and you got cracks right here. The, the issue is, is this boat is old enough to where you've already got a belly in the transom. You can see it. Oh, you can see it. Something. And that's not, that's not factory specs? No, that's not factory <laughs> specs. It's supposed to be straight. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you ever have in, in life do you ever have like feelings of nostalgia for stuff, old timey stuff? Yeah. D but does it... not to use it to where I'm out in the water <laughs> trusting it. Like, does it pain you to see this go? No. 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 Forget the engine, because just for for practicality and safety sense, that's got to be replaced. Uh -huh. But when you look at the boat and you got to rate it on a sliding scale between one and ten, what do you give it? 
probably five or six. And, oh, and, really? Yeah. Oh, that's great, man. And, and mainly because you're I thought really... you were going to throw me some lowball numbers. No, no, it's not that horrible. Try to strip some of this stuff off, huh? <laughs> yes, all of it's coming off. All your cables come off, the binnacle comes off, the motor will come off. Yeah, all of this will be replaced. Let's do it. It's just a given that you're going to have trouble with it. Yeah. The only way to get out of the water is just the tiller. The tiller. I'll sit back here and kind of discreetly steer, and my buddy will sit up there and act like he's driving the boat. And no one will know that. <laughs> Nobody will know the no difference. No one will know we're having no. problems. <laughs> After working on modifications all day with the guys at the shop, I wanted to add one final safety upgrade before calling it a day. Beautiful. Almost makes you want to have something catch on fire, don't it? <laughs> so the plan here this morning is to be fishing for redfish with JT Van Zandt, who I've hunted turkeys with but not fished with. But this dude is a professional flats fishing guide. And he runs this like souped up flats boat, which allows you to cruise around in very shallow water, you know, inches of water. And that's where the redfish like to prowl. As I got into catching redfish on a fly rod, it just really opened me up to learning to love nature and seeing these bright, vibrant colored redfish swimming in these shallow waters, I just thought, how could there be anything more magical or cooler than this? We're going to find a big school out here. You see how much bait is here? See these two little reds out to our left? You see this guy at nine? He's in the shadow way close. Here's a redfish coming at us at your three. Put it out and rip it out in front of him. Yeah, rip it. Make him eat it. Here he comes. Eat it. Oh! Guiding became this opportunity to be on the water all the time. Like, I can promise you, I would have a hard time fishing a couple days a month at this point as a parent if I didn't do it for a living. With this boat, that ain't going to happen. So this is kind of messing up JT's plan a little bit or his normal way of processing. But we're going to see if he can be cool about it and go along. He's a pretty, uh, you'll see, very laid back dude. So I'm not too worried about it. What do you want out there, goddamn? What's up, man? Hey, Steve, how are you, buddy? How's it going, dude? Good to see you. Good Come on in. You. Oh, it's good to see your house, man. Thanks, buddy. That's where you sleep. Little rental place. My, it's my kitchen slash bedroom. This is my post Hurricane Harvey setup. Oh, where's your pre Hurricane Harvey setup? Um, close to where we're putting in. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> you get this place? <laughs> You're a refugee? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Along with 80% of the folks here, but we recovered quickly. Where's this rig? Outside. Let's check it out. What is this job? So this is the rig. Granddad's last dying wish that you take care of this thing for him, or what? Even though we can't get into the water you like to get into, um, you're still going to bring your fly pole, right? Yeah, I'll bring a fly rod. Yeah. We'll probably get out of the boat and do some wading around. Oh, there you go. I want to go into some back lakes with sand bottom real clear, count the blue crabs and stingrays, and see if we can find some fish. Oh, good. Right. Throw some plastics out and maybe some bait. I'm going to break with the normal protocol today and go with the nostalgic version of how these type of crafts were always used in fish back then. This is, yeah, this is like, growing up, this is all the old dudes. Cause my, the floating version of the Airstream trailer. It's funny to have not seen it float. So it hasn't just, been even just on like a test run yet. There's just an assumption that it floats. Oh, we get to christen it. What a deal. Sweet, man, let's go try to sink this thing.
JT, what was the last time you caught a fish on a hunk of dead fish? Man, to tell you the truth, I can't remember. I have on good authority from your buddy, Uncle Leader, slip sinker, no swivel, right down to a hook. What's the purpose of having to wait all the way down like You know, that? I, it struck me as unusual. It was explained to me that it's just a lot less weeds hung up. Just one less thing it's been on the line. Grassy. You know what I'm saying? JT is a diehard fly fisherman, whereas I regard myself as more of a conventional gear fellow. Naturally, there's a tension I needed to address. You know, humans, like, we're pretty tribalistic, right? I'm not even trashing the need for tribalism because it gives you a sense of identity. With that said, some of the tribalism can run, it gets a little bit overly nuanced, you know? But I do feel like I have a sense of tribalism for just people that like to hunt fish. Like, if I had one dollar, and there's two people that needed to borrow a dollar, and one hunted and fished and one didn't, I'd lend the one that hunted the fish a dollar. But some people, I think, the tribalism runs like, it just gets so esoteric, where it's like, well, I, my tribe, right, we fish with only our, like, spinning rods, but only artificials, and I hate the dude that would put a night crawler on the hook. That's a little detail-oriented. Well, within the fly fishing community, down here on the Gulf Coast early on, people just made fun of it. They didn't understand why on earth you'd be waving a fly rod down here. Yeah. A wimp stick, they call it. Uh, total ridicule. Um, but it's accepted now as part of the, it's a, it's a small slice of the pie, but it is a slice. Um, but I think fly fishermen have earned themselves a sort of a stereotype of being almighty. And I think in some cases, rightfully so. In fact, and, and I'll say this, I mean, if, you, if you're going down the road in Rockport and you see a bar and in the parking lot it's loaded with Poland skiffs, keep going. There's no fun to be had in there. Find a, a bar that's loaded with airboats outside, strap on your boots and get ready for a good time. Poling skiffs and my buddies in airboats are pretty much the only people with, with mechanical access to this area based on the performance of their boats. Yeah. So, we tend to have the shallow water to ourselves. That's a great example of sort of that tribalism you're talking about coming together. The, the, an airboat and a pulling skiff have two entirely different methods of fishing. But they're, they're, they're a fringe group of individuals who enjoy the same water, right? So especially in Rockport, there's been a coming together of those two groups. You know, when it comes to uh wildlife issues that come around that tribalism or tension between different user groups. When people are doing conflict resolution, you'll often hear these people discuss this idea of finding the common ground. It's so easy to find on these kind of issues because it's like it's the damn fish. Like, we all agree that that thing's cool and it's right there. Bait fishing just wasn't working and we were getting bored waiting for the fish to come to us. So JT and I decided to go looking for a few. We pushed the boat into some shallow creeks and marshes with the hope of sight casting flies to cruising reds. Not knocking the bait thing, but I just, I'm too OCD to sit out there and wait for something to happen when I feel like I can proactively you can bring it to get it. shallow and bring it to them, you know? Normally, JT stands on a raised platform and pushes his boat through the skinny water with a long pole. He's used to having that elevated advantage to see fish from a long way off. With Das' boat, we have to get a little creative. What I'll do is have you stand on that. I'll walk us through that in lieu of no pole, and you can just flip it at fish we see. Like, I'll actively move along these shorelines. Yeah. And there's little channels that you can weave through these little, little islands and get way in there, and you can see that it's only about this deep. So there'll be a crab and then redfish 30 feet. 11 o'clock, you see him and you'll be, I got him. Real visual. Like, like, like turkey with a bow, man. The conditions made fly casting difficult. After struggling against 30 mile per hour winds, I reached for a spinning rod rigged with a soft plastic bait. When we see one, you'll just get a toss beyond it where you can bring that to its face. Mm -hmm. And then instead of really ripping it past them, they'll give up on it. Just a couple little, Got it. they're lazy southerners, you know? 
They've got a shrimp every square foot. So they're yeah. like, ah. Yeah, they should be up in that stuff, like visibly working with us locked in on them from 100 yards away. See you there? Right oh, here. You're right. He's right here. OK, you got him. Hey, good, good. Bring it to his face. He ate it, said it. Nice, Steve. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> good spot, baby. Good oh, spot. Dude, that is really, really, really fun, man. Shit, yeah, See baby. Him? That's cool as shit. You gotta go from the inside. Go, you, you guys not the inside. Yeah, we Oh, go. all day long, baby. Sweet. Yeah. Good job, senor. Good job. Now we're gonna honor you well. You see your process here. You were saying that when you do keep fish, you like to. I like to bleed them out. You like to make it. You get a little. You got a little ritual. Yeah, just slit their throat and let the let their blood return to the resource where it came from. One for the cooler, man. Great work on the tough guys. Way to go. A couple more like that. We can do ceviche. We can do some on the half shell. Bake one whole. Whatever you want to do. I also wipe that slime off. Yeah, yeah. Just get them real clean and presentable for the for the butcher yeah. It's like you were saying too. Like it's a little bit of a ritual. I just think it sort of sets the whole. You kind of put something in motion when you get a fish and take care of it right from the start. Yeah. We eat it, treat it respectfully. It's Guys like tough. me who like to fish for meat, when I'm on a river and it's like a no-kill river, I'm like, dude, but that's like fishing, like eating fish is foundational to fishing. It's an ancestral food acquisition activity. How could you possibly remove it? Yeah. But he talked to another guy and he's like, I know, I raised my family guiding on this river. This river simply can't withstand this amount of angler pressure if everyone's killing five trout a day. All that's it doesn't work. accounted for. Yeah. yeah. But it, I treat it in a way that's sustainable and I'm not having a negative impact on other people's chance for success. To me, if, if we all keep that in mind, then the resource benefits, the recreational aspect of the benefits, and we stay friendly with one another. You're familiar with sort of like the concept, the, the very difficult to define concept of fair chase. I heard this guy, he has this great argument, he's like, forget about the word fair chase. Let's talk about fair share right? Fair share and fair use. And get rid of that what you do is not the right way, or like my way of hunting or my way of fishing is right, your way of hunting or your way of fishing is wrong. And let's just look at, we have a finite resource. What's fair use? You know, I don't, I don't condemn coming down here to, to catch a limit. That's a legal activity. But if it's the only thing in your mind coming to a beautiful natural resource like this is just catching my limit of fish, then your blinders are on for so much other stuff that's here to enjoy. You got the boat all bloody now, man. All right, good work. It's hard to quit fishing. Closest thing to a chicken pie on fish. You know what I mean? It really is. Yeah. Correct. If I had to pick a fish to eat for the rest of my life, it would be a fish like this. Ling cod, redfish, like a white, uh, like a mild. Well, there goes the redfish population. A mild, <laughs> white fleshed, versatile fish. I think it's a, it's a very edible fish where I'm going with the argument as a fly fishing guy is the quality of the redfish's taste compared to the pleasure of catching and seeing redfish. Yeah, but you're making a, you're making a, um, it's not a one or the other. No, that's what I, I agree 100%. I think you let some go and you keep some. Mm -hmm. Try to let a couple swim back, but definitely pop a couple and do this kind of thing with friends. What a blessing. Amazing food. What's your take on the boat? The boat, the boat now is sort of like, uh, it's one of us. It has a character about it. I ran the hell out of her. And I, I just like what she represents. I like bringing something back to life that still has life to give. A bit of the characteristics of that old boat 
like wiggling under our feet and getting slammed around out there and spraying. And, and we've got cut, cut mullet heads in the bills. I remember being a little kid and being at a boat launch, or being at the boat ramp, and having, I remember the feeling of feeling like some bit of shame about a boat when you saw like another fancy boat. Or going out through the channel to, in, in Lake Michigan, passing out Lake Michigan to troll salmon, just these big yachts, and, and you're like this little vulnerable <laughs> boat bobbing along, you know, and you got like homemade shit for your downriggers coming off the side, and just feeling like, like, somehow they had more of a right to it than you did because you're in this little shitty boat and they're in this big giant boat and you had to watch out for them. So the boat got you thinking. That's how you're supposed, you're supposed to go get muddy and filthy back in there. Yeah. You're supposed to trudge through that shit, you know? I love that. I'm leaving the keys with JT in hopes that he'll pass Das' boat on to another buddy who will then pass her on again. This is just the start of a long and entertaining journey. All right, man. What did I do to deserve this? You uh, fish it if you want and pass it along. And I hope, and I think someday, I don't know what's going to happen with the boat, but someday I hope to see those again. Good deal, buddy. I mean, not just those, but. Yeah, the whole rim. Yeah, not the whole ship. Yeah. The boat. The experience. <laughs> <laughs> Doss Boat may be 30 years old, but this adventure is just getting started. In the next chapter, the boat goes to Austin, Texas to fish with renowned guide Alvin Dado and award-winning Texas chef Jesse Griffiths. <laughs> They're gonna chase some bass, maybe even eat one. Don't miss it. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you like what you saw. Like us, leave a comment, and subscribe so that you do not miss future episodes.